So welcome to another painting live tutorial. My name is Goro Fujita and today I'm gonna deep dive into the new timeline features of Quill. I also got requested to cover a little bit how to um, create like clean surfaces in Quill. So let's dive right in. I want to draw like an airplane or something. So maybe it's like a red airplane. I will uh, choose like a red color or something. Let me change the background color to a brighter color again. So um, for uh, first, I'm just going to create like a clean shape for the for this airplane that I'm trying to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I paint like the C shape and then um, I move the uh, pivot with the index finger uh, trigger alongside an axis and then I duplicate. Um, this is like a cool technique, a lathe technique where you can just duplicate um, and lathe a clean surface. So this is basically you hit the Alt trigger to duplicate. Um, you have now this uh, cool button mapping here. You see the Alt trigger at the top left and then you can basically grab a duplicate out and then um, you just hit redo to keep redoing a single duplication motion. So duplicate with offset I mean. All right, so this is going to be my little airplane here. I'm going to stretch it a little bit with a grab tool. Uh, okay, let me fix that a little bit. I don't want to be like too accurate here. And then I can just start colorizing it. Um, the underside might be a little bit darker. Maybe the top side. Maybe it's lit from the side a little bit, just like this. And then I'm going to create some wings as well, uh, just with the line tool. And I can uh, taper uh, the line tool um, while I'm drawing. And I'm going to make a bigger wing here, something like this. And then um, duplicate it to the other side. So I just rotate it with snap rotate. With index finger, you can snap rotate. And then I'm going to also rotate it a little bit like this. It and select both and move move it back a little so this looks good and maybe I want the underside to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna duplicate it down just like this and then um, colorize the underside so we have like a cool lit surface um, and then I'm gonna take this maybe we will do something like this here Pretty simple, and then um, there's some Z fighting going on here. I can, I think, I can just fix it by nudging it a little bit. Z fighting happens when um, uh, surfaces are like um, exactly on top of each other. So what I did is uh, I just nudged the surface a little bit to get um, some variation in there, and I'm gonna then also um, erase some of this. This is going to be the cockpit. And maybe the, this is like for a co-pilot or something, you know. Um, let me see what I'm going to do. But um, then um, I'm going to paint this here. You know, um, make the edge a little bit cleaner with just a simple paintbrush. That's good. And then I'm going to um, paint the cockpit inside. Maybe I do like a new layer for this one. So this is the plain body. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, I don't know if uh, nobody's asking questions yet. So I think, I hope it works. It seems like it's working fine. But now this is going to be the cockpit for the seat. Maybe I, I have like a seat in there. What I'm gonna do is I use the line tool. I snap. So I have like uh, the right angles, creating like a little seat here. Oops. And yeah, what you can do is also do something like this and then oop, to get like really clean, clean shapes, just like this. So this is the seat. I'm going to put one seat in here. And one seat in here. That's good. 
and then um, I'm just gonna fill in the sides here with black. I don't want to see the wings and stuff, right? So just gonna fill in everything here. So it looks like it's in shadow. And then do something like this. Just fill it in, you know? Easy peasy. All right, I do the same thing here. Just gonna um, cover up the inside so nothing shines through. And I'm doing that by just duplicating the strokes. Okay. So now we have like this cool little airplane um, with pretty clean shapes. Uh, let me go back to the body and just remove some of those elements here, like make it a little bit cleaner. There we go. Okay, this is looking good. Um, then we need like a little jet or something in the back. So let me do like a line tool. The FX node is saying I would like to get Quill but only have the Vive. I've seen people using it successfully with uh, the third party tool Revive. I don't have personal experience with it, but um, people have been using it, so. But the button mapping and stuff, of course, won't be the same, right? So that's the downside of it. You know what? I, I, let me redo that again. So what I'm going to do is like I'm creating like a little jet. And to do this, I'm going to angle this a little bit and then angle this a little bit. Just like this. And move it down a little. And then I'm going to do the duplicate transform repeat again and um, create like a little afterburner. So this is cool. So probably this is like this little jet here, jet engine. <coughs> and then I'm gonna colorize it. Like I might wanna import at this point a sky gradient. So let me go to um, here in image import, you go to accurate rectangular mono, and then you can bring in a sky gradient, which is basically a, um, a 1000 by 2000 pixels uh, PNG. And you see it's like a little sphere now, right? So you can open the sphere up like this, scale it. And uh, this is a really cool way to add like um, a little background to it. So this is the, I call it the sky. So this is like pretty cool. Okay, this is the body. Let me um, change this to maybe this is like a metal layer at all. So I have them separate and this is the interior. And then for the metal layer, I'm just gonna do, um, I'm just gonna colorize and the light is coming from up here. So I'm gonna change this to like, um, like reflection of the light and then we have some bounce light and reflection of the sky color maybe the bottom is even a little bit warmer something like this and this side um, will be bluer let's see and it starts looking like metal which is kind of cool this colorizing a little bit of verticals And there we go, we have a hand-painted metal shader. The inside, I might want to um, also, I'm going to scale it down a little and then um, paint the inside as well. So the paint, the inside is maybe a little bit darker, just like this. And then we also need uh, some afterburner inside. So let me, let me actually put this on an extra layer. Um, so I can access this, so metal inside or something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer and call it like um, jet or something. And um, create, basically I hit up to create new frames and I think I'm going to create about 15 frames, hit loop and hit play. And then I'm going to 
paint like a little jet engine. So with the anim brush, just gonna go ahead and um, put some blues in there. And then um, of course it also comes out like this. So what I like doing is um, when I paint with the anim brush, I oftentimes just change the brush size while I'm painting. So you can do like something like this, but you can let it taper, which is like kind of cool. So you can taper the stroke as it comes out, right? So you get like this nice effect. So this is like um quick animation for the afterburner. Some particles coming out or fluid dynamics or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You can do it in real time, which is like super crazy and super fun as well. So um, now I'm going to just kind of dodge it a little bit and um, make it like really bright. Ooh, this is cool. It looks cool. So uh, kind of dodge the whole thing a little. Maybe the inside is even a little bit brighter. So you get like this really cool uh jet engine type of feel and then the, for the metal inside i'm just gonna create like maybe five frames um uh hit it, make it a loop so what i did is i duplicated five frames and then i'm just gonna use the um color dodge to um add a little bit of glow in there right so this is gonna i'm gonna tap it a few times and then it looks like it's reacting so this is pretty cool. Boom, 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 boom. See how it's like flickering? So I'm just triggering it a few times. So it's like, so it's like reacting to the fire, which is pretty cool. All right. So now we have this. Uh, let me work on some uh, characters. So I'm going to create a character here. And I might create like a folder. So this is the plane. Plane, and then inside the plane, there's the guy. There's a character in there, so I create a new. Oops, what did what did I do? A new layer. Okay, so um, for him, why not? I'm gonna create like a half circle again, and then I'm just gonna duplicate it around to get like this nice sphere again. And then I'm going to probably use it for both for, um, oops. I'm going to probably use it for both the body and the head. So I can create like this guy and then this would be the body. Maybe he has like a brown flight jacket or something. And then um, easily with the grab tool, you can then um, modify the look of the head the shape of the head it's almost like sculpting it you know which is like really convenient so that is that and then let me sculpt his body i don't need much detail because um half of his body will be in the airplane but um let me quickly do this and maybe there's like a little neckline just like this and then let's see we put him in here and we put the head on top maybe a little bit smaller something like this this is good all right and um then for this guy let me draw some ears so this is the ear and there's another ear here maybe i add some some variation here maybe some scattering in his ears you know um, and he will have like a like a flight hat hat right so it's gonna be um i think i'm gonna create a new layer for this so this is um let me actually select this guy and create new layer so that will separate the head um from the body so this will be the head and this will be the skin 
MC Lucius is trying, uh, uh, saying, this part I don't know how it works. I press up on the left controller, but I don't get any frames. Um, look, if you, if you like create a new layer here and you hit up on the left controller, you see that it creates empty frames, right? So if you then draw and you go to the next frame, you see the onion skin of the previous frame. So you can do this, 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 and if you animate, if you go back and forth, you already have a frame by frame animation. Um, however, if you, let me delete this, if you have um, already a stroke in there and you want to duplicate this frame, uh, you just hold Alt trigger, the left index finger trigger and up, so it will duplicate the frame and then you can move it so you see the previous onion skin as well, so you can animate like that. So um, if you hold Alt and up, it will duplicate the frame if you hit loop and play and do any action on that thing like nudging right it will work over time so this is how simple it is hopefully that explains the workflow all right so um now uh, we have the so we have the hat so let me draw the hat here um let's see I think I should be looking at reference right now, but you know, like didn't have time to prepare anything, so I'm just gonna do <laughs> do it like the way I imagine this had to be. Something like this. I'm gonna make it like really rough because it's important for me that you guys understand the concept. Right, like you can always spend more time to make things look great, you know, but um, it's more important for me that you understand the concept of things. So um, I will also create like the hair. So hair, he might have eyebrows and beard and stuff like that. So I'm gonna give him some eyebrows, and maybe his eyebrows are so thick that you don't see the eyes. Something like this, and then I use the same for the mustache. Just like this. And maybe I'm gonna give him on the skin layer, I'm gonna give him like a nose. So the line tool. There you go. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright, so um on the hair layer I also want some hair here. Yes, some hair. Something like this. And then I'm going to also colorize a little bit. So let me duplicate this, um, add a little bit of light from the top. So what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating the strokes and then adding some light from the top. Um, this part will be maybe a little bit darker. All right, so this is cool. Um, I think I'm gonna also give them some eyes. Mine as well, so let me move the eye here maybe he looks he looks a little bit angry so let me see if i can make him look a little bit friendlier yeah something like this yeah that's pretty cool all right so this is his mustache here um and then go to the skin layer and light it a little bit so this one will the bottom will be in shadow and then the top portion will be a little bit in light while this part where it hits the hat it's gonna have some ambient inclusion to it so i'm just gonna paint it like this and this is already looking pretty nice so i'm just gonna um select it all and oops i selected the body with the hat so this one um this option allows you to select across layers which is like a really cool functionality that i use all the time um just be careful if uh, to select it off um and only use it when whenever you need it right so this is the neck here let me draw some arms so the arms um he's like steering um i can actually use the line tool yeah so maybe he's like flying this thing just like this and then on the skin layer um oh, i painted on the skin layer let me just release this and i think i merge it with a body layer so so this is going to be the body layer so i'm gonna call it body 
and then on the body I'm just gonna add the hands so all right um so uh the jacket needs a little bit of lighting so let me go back to the body layer and add a little bit of lighting on here and maybe it also needs like a little color here so let me add like a furry color actually you know um i'm gonna create it on a new layer the color because i want the color to uh, be moving so um it's another thing uh, with layer management you know like do not animate anything that's not moving meaning like um keep it lightweight right because it helps you to uh, manage file size and stuff down the line so there you go this is like the jacket and maybe he needs some pants um for the pants i'm gonna do something like this and just duplicate it to the other side so now he's like flying this is looking good i think his hat needs also some lighting here so i'm gonna um colorize it here and then maybe his flaps have like little strings here um i will use the line tool with this select it and just add a little bit of swing here with the grab tool i'm gonna move this over to the other side plant it here okay so this is looking good maybe she needs some goggles um maybe he's wearing some goggles let me see um what that will look like um, i'm gonna create some goggles here and i'm I, again on a wrong layer so i'm gonna select it create a new layer call it goggles And then um, move this up just like this. See how this works. Yeah, I think this is kind of cool. Let's see. Just testing it out or either on his face or i put it up here but i think it will make more sense that he's actually wearing it right now so let me um position it correctly and that's what i love about um vr is you can do stuff outside and then um attach it later on which is like fantastic so let me move move the goggles over a little bit so you see his eyes yeah, that's, this is pretty cool. That is working nicely, so I'm gonna push it with a grab tool a little bit, form it to his face. So it's not as separated. And then maybe move this over a little bit, just like that. Yeah, that is cool. All right, so we have the goggles and maybe the goggles have also some flaps. So uh, let me see what I want to do. I think the hat needs to be animated. So I'm gonna add those straps also to the hat because I don't want to animate the goggles. So I'm just gonna use the grab tool here and uh, um, put a little bit of distortion on there and then this is like um, the straps for his goggles. And then on the goggles layer, I will also add um, a little bit of the, the metal clips, just like that, and maybe add some highlight on top. And maybe the goggles also um, need some highlights here on top. And maybe I go into some blue as well. Um, just to add some metal reflection as well. Now we have the pilot and he needs a co-pilot. That could be a dog, right? So let, let me do like a little dog here. Um, maybe I should uh, save once in a while. Um, so this is the guy. Um, and then he has also a co-pilot. So I'm gonna call this dog. And his dog is sitting in the back. So let me design a little dog here. So I'm going to use the line tool for this one. Uh, very simple. Um, 
something like this. And then um, he will have also ears, and the ears will be on an extra layer. And call me, I'm gonna call it ears, like this. And then um, let's see, maybe do something like this, make it bigger. And then I want to also add a little bit of motion to those ears. I'm gonna animate them later, so I'm just gonna duplicate it over and use it a different angle here so this is cool so this and then um for the body i'm just gonna make him a little bit darker a little bit redder maybe something like something like this yeah that looks good and then i'm gonna duplicate it to add some lighting so um this is gonna be his lit side just like this and um let me move it over a little just a little Boom. so this way i can add a little bit of add the effect of light which is kind of cool and i see the snout is like a little bit angled wrong i make it smaller as well and then the ears have to attach just like this and then let's see how we can put him in here so he would be in here um maybe he's wearing goggles as well so let me uh get the goggles here um where's the goggles it's in the head so i'm just gonna um, move it over here the goggles um move it into the dog layer and then uh reuse uh the goggles for the dog there you go <laughs> this is so easy this is so cool FX notice, uh, is it easy enough to get your quill drawing into Blender or Maya? As long as you know import export workflows with Alembic or FVX, it's the same as it's just 3D geometry. So that's all it is. Uh, note that transform keyframes don't get exported. Uh, it's only frame by frame animation can get exported. But uh, people have been exporting stuff to Blender plenty of times. Um, and there's also like tutorials out there if you go to the virtual animation group on facebook check the first post at the top of the group that one has like all available tutorials for any tool like whether it's like quill animvr tvori tilt brush there's like a bunch of um useful tutorials there so make sure to check those out so we have the goggles for the dog. Impressive what cool things you can do in such a short time. How long does it take for you to draw pieces like worlds and worlds? Um, really depends on the level of detail uh, you want to put into. Um, worlds and worlds back then without, there was like, it was the basic version of Quill, so it didn't have any selection tools and duplication functionalities and stuff like that. So obviously it took me longer but I still did it in about like three days maybe. And now I can probably do something like this much more detailed in the same amount of time. Detailed and animated now, right? Because back then there was no animation support. So now we have the doggy here, he looks cool. Um, let me give him also a body. So, uh, so we need the body, this is the body. Actually, this is the head. So we need, uh, let me put this in a head layer. So I'm, I'm already organizing the layers because I want to animate them later. So this is the head layer, <coughs> head. So I'm gonna put a body um, in there as well. So something like this, I'm gonna do something really simple. Oops, I have to be careful not to select other items. So let me, reverse all this undo all this so now dog new layer okay now i'm gonna draw the body here something like this maybe he needs a neck too his neck and he's also holding on to like a steering wheel or something steering um, handle or whatever you call it then i'm gonna duplicate it slightly over and light him as well so 
has some lighting on it, but it looks like he's naked. So I'm gonna give him a jacket. So let me give him a jacket here or a vest or something. No, a jacket is fine. Maybe he has short sleeves, something like this. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, the back is open. Close it up. Close it up. All right, there he is. And maybe he has a scarf. So I'm gonna give him a scarf. So this is the body. And I'm gonna give him a neck scarf too. So this is a scarf. So uh, let me see what color, maybe something blue, something like this. And, and then I'm gonna colorize it. Well, before that, I'm going to duplicate it a little bit. I like this little methods, you know, the little trick to do some lighting. And then underneath at the neck, of course, it's like kind of darker. And then um, I can actually start animating this stuff, I think. So um, at this point, I'm going to start animating the scarf, for example. Maybe I do like 15 frames or something. I duplicate and simply hit Alt Duplicate, hit Loop, and then I hit Play, use the Notch tool and animate a little bit of like f flapping, like with a nudge over time and just animating like some crazy wind animation here, right? That's looking already like pretty convincing. I do the same for the ears, so I'm gonna go back um, about 15 frames. It's a good number for this kind of stuff. Hit play. Uh, so Victor John came in. They did you paint the plane or bring in a model? It's all painted from scratch. Um, I used the lathe technique um, to do that. Um, I might do this again at some point here in the stream, so um, I can show you how it's done. So I'm just like moving the ears. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can do something with a grab tool. No, I think not just good. So this is like um, his ears flying around. Um, but what you can do also is I select the ear now, this one, 15 frames, and then just rotate it a little bit because I think it's cooler in a different angle. Yeah, that looks good. And maybe I select this ear and readjust this position as well to do something like this. Yeah, and then I'm nudging again to add a little bit more aggressive movement to it. Yeah, that looks like he's flying, which is cool. All right, um, now let's go to the uh, pilot and we have the hat. So I'm gonna do the hat also like 15 frames, about 15 frames um, and hit loop. And then I think this one is, um, I'm gonna angle it like this before I nudge it. So I'm gonna nudge it over time like this. And I have the strap here too. And the hat itself can move a little bit too, right? So because it's leather, so it's gonna move a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of movement with the nudge tool and then the, of course the straps, they go crazy. Boom, you know, straps go crazy. And again, the strap, I can change the angle so it's more with the wind. So there we go, this is looking really cool. Um, I also uh, changed the hair and to put the hair on one layer because I wanted to do the same thing, uh, about 15 frames, hit loop, hit play, and then I can animate the beard as well, right? So this is like, his eyebrows, thick eyebrows, even waves in the wind. So this is this is pretty cool. Uh, I think I also have the collar. So this is the collar. Collar. Oops. And then I do the same thing, about 15 frames. Boom, boom, boom. Loop, hit, play, and then animate the collar. So now we have like a crazy, it looks like, there's wind, which is cool. All right, so now we need um, some, oh, you know what? Um, just because, let me see where the plane is. Let me see if this works. So I'm gonna select like a bunch of um, strokes here that I laced. 
and then see if I can recolor them with white to have some nice stripes going on here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Cool. It's like really clean because I laced it, right? And then um, this side will be warmer and it will be white. Yeah. Just like that, you know, which is kind of a cool little trick if you want like some really clean markings and stuff like that. Okay, um, the same thing. Let me see if I can actually draw like um, little stripes here. Yeah, it works. This is pretty cool. Get some extra detail uh, for basically for free. Okay, I see some gaps here that I want to close off. So let me close off these gaps. Um, there's another gap here. I'll pick the color and just closing off the gaps. All right, and maybe we need some glass as well. So for the glass, uh, I will try to just paint the highlight here and just indicate a glass. You know what, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna use the grab tool to do this. And then I use um, the view dependent brush here to add a little bit of um, highlights. So when you rotate away, you, you won't see it anymore. So th this is like the angle dependent brush um, it's sometimes used for, you know, for like little little reflections and stuff like that. It can be like really add like a really cool effect. And don't forget to turn it off. Now he has like this cool little effect. And then here I'm going to erase a little bit maybe. So you only see like certain parts. So it looks like glass. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and maybe we can use the same same glass for him. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so now we have the airplane. Um, it's like going at full speed. Uh, so we need some background here. So let me draw the background clouds or let me bring in a sound first. So um, for the plane, I'm gonna bring in a sound. So I hit the sound, I have an engine loop prepared. So you hear the engine, hopefully. Um, if it gets annoying, just let me know. You can hit loop here and you can also spatialize it and you see the sound is over here. I can bring the sound in here, basically, and um, turn on the attenuation. So, is attenuation, so I want to hear it in this sphere. So. Yeah, now I can hear it. So if I change, this is positional audio, right? The green, the green sphere shows where you hear 100% of the sound, and then the red sphere is the fall off. So I have something like this, which is cool. Okay, and this is positional now too, so if I, you should be hearing it on your left ear right now. And then you should be hearing it on your right ear right now. So this is like pretty cool. For now, I'm gonna mute the sound, however, so it doesn't like bother me while I'm talking. Does the color information animation export an FBX so that it can render an octane? Um, uh, Quill exports vertex color. Yeah, I rendered stuff in Octane before with vertex color. You just have to um, use a vertex color node and um, point the vertex color attribute to RGBA in uh, Redshift and RGB for for Octane, I believe. So that's one thing you have to do. It doesn't just automatically show. You have to turn on vertex color by using a vertex color node. So I'm going to uh, create some clouds now because he's flying through the air. Um, so let me choose like a nice cloud shadow color. So I always start with a shadow color first. And maybe I'm just going to do some cartoony clouds with a line tool. So um, I might do something like this. I'm just designing it with a line tool only. Something like this. 
and make sure that he, it's like around him. And um, I can also use the grab tool at any time and change the shape of uh, the clouds, which is like super convenient. And you can even inflate them with a thick and thin tool and stuff like that to get different types of shapes. Also rotating clouds like this, you know, you get like different shapes, which is like a super quick way to um, get some variations which I really love to take advantage of when I'm when working in VR. So let me, this is actually pretty cool too. There's some little clouds coming off of the bigger clouds, something like this. I'm just gonna create like um, a good rhythm of different clouds. Something like this. Maybe stretch it a little bit. Bend it a little bit, something like this. Uh, and then I'm just gonna um, populate the area here with um, a bunch of clouds um, that I'm going to animate soon. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. Maybe I turn it, turn this around. And then, um, yeah, I just keep going here, nothing. Interesting to talk about at this point. It's basically just a bunch of clouds, and I'm making sure that it's it's not hitting him because I want this to be a perfect loop. Um, you will see what I'm going to do in a bit. So maybe there's like a bigger cloud here, smaller clouds here coming off of this guy, and this looks actually a little bit too repetitive. So I'm gonna just rotate it so it looks different. Rotate this guy so it looks different, and. Um, we grab this guy connected with this connected with this so we get like different shapes of like nice little clouds so i see like there's a little gap here let me fill up the gap with another cloud that i rotate and oh, it looks too similar i'm just trying to find a nice balance of like different shaped clouds let me move this in with a grab tool and of course, I could spend more time designing the clouds, you know, but um, right now I really want you guys to really only understand the concept of how quickly you can create worlds with Quill. All right, so these clouds look uh, pretty good. Um, and let's see if we can colorize them a little bit so we have some some variation in there. So some more deeper blues. And then what I'm going to do is like, uh, I'm going to optimize this um, with uh, op uh, about this much of op opacity. I said optimize currently. If I go full force, you see that the um, clouds get like much simpler. Um, so um, if I undo, you will see it. So this is like full resolution. If you optimize them, you see that there's a little change, but that makes it much more lightweight. Uh, what I can do now is like I duplicate it, duplicate it up and left, and then then add some highlights for the sun, right? So this is like where the sun is shining, and then I can still move. Um, let me isolated so those are the clouds highlights and then i can add some shadows here they might not be like all bright because they are covered by another cloud so i'm gonna add some shadows here but also brighter areas here on top so this will give it like a really nice feel of like lit clouds that's pretty cool and then um for the clouds shadow side i want a little bit punchier blue something like this would look much better okay so this is cool um let me go back to the sky dome here um lower the transparency and make it a little bit bigger yeah this is good and yeah, this looks nice um, maybe i will move it up a little up a little so i have more of this nice little gradient all right so now we have those wonderful clouds i don't like the um highlight areas i, I want to fix them i want to clean them up a little they 
look a little bit dirty. So let me make them brighter again. And then I use the shadow color because for some reason it was like too dull. So I'm just going to use the blue for the shadows because that will look much better. Okay, so now. Now it's working. Yeah, this is looking really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm I'm gonna uh, basically uh, merge the highlight with the cloud, and I'm gonna add some markers for uh, where I want this cl these clouds to loop. So I'm gonna create like a marker here with a line tool, another marker here. Uh, let me move them out a little. Something like this, and then I'm going to. Um, select it all, move it over here, and I just make sure that the markers overlap perfectly. And then I just hit redo to create um, uh, duplications. And now you see like um, it disappeared just because the sky dome is like blocking it. Uh, and I duplicate it a few more times. So this is probably a good size uh, where I can just bring it back. And I can look at the sky dome and see where the sky dome is cropping my sky, uh, my clouds. So um, I think this is good because the clouds, it gives me like one. So I don't actually need these. So I'm going to delete these. And then I have the perfect length for the clouds. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create another marker. Right? I'm, sure, I'm actually not sure if this is the best way, but I'm just like improvising right now, freestyling, um, thinking of how I would do it spontaneously. This is not planned, so there might be an easier way to do this, but this is easy enough. So now I have this marker um, and the clouds. So this is the clouds. And what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to uh, set a transform keyframe here, right? And then I go to like maybe one second or something, set another transform keyframe here, boom, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. Uh, let me center the pivot so I can grab the pivot. So while I'm selecting this second keyframe, I'm just going to move this close to the green marker, right? And then what I'm going to do is to loop a sequence, you have to create, uh, to loop a layer with transform keys, you have to create a sequence layer. So I'm going to create a sequence layer, put the clouds in there. My playhead is make sure that it's already on the loop point, and then I just hit loop, right? What happens now, um, one thing, yeah, it should have worked already. So now you see that it's like a perfect loop. There's no jump in there. Right. And then it just disappears into the sky, into the sky box, which is really, really cool. At this point, you can actually um, hide all the markers. So uh, I don't need this marker anymore. So I can just uh, delete the marker. And uh, I can delete the red marker. So I'm going to uh, hide the sky. Oops. Yeah. And then just delete the red markers here. You can just select them all. And because it's a still image, I can just delete them. And now I have this perfect loop of the clouds, right? So this is pretty cool. So now I turn on the sky, and then if you're like with him, it looks like they're flying. One more thing you can do um, is you want um, this the clouds to uh, disappear somewhat into uh, fog, depth fog. So what, what you can do is that you create like a little um, wall with the line tool, right? And then you can um, select like a sky color. Let's just do something like this and then um, bring down the opacity to like 25 or something, you know, and then you can layer these on top. And right now it doesn't work so well because if I, I have a sky gradient. So actually what I can do here, I totally forgot about this. You can um, duplicate the sky 
right? You can duplicate it and then scale it. Scale it down. Um, you can't really see it, I think. But um, scale it down. So, so let me show you. This is like the other sky dome. You scale it up a little. And then you bring down the opacity a little bit. Right? What it does is it's like creating like a little depth fog. See? And then you can bring it down and um, bring. So I think I do like a 75 here and then I do a 50% here. Let me get to 50%. And then you, you see like it's a much smoother way to reveal the clouds. See, so this is this is pretty cool. Um, let me save it right here, and then um, maybe they're listening to some music, right? So um, let me put. So this is the plane. They're inside the plane, right? And the cool thing about this now is like uh, I can put sound into the plane. So the engine loop is already in there, right? So if I turn this on, like you go away from the um, airplane and you don't hear uh, the airplane as much. I can actually ch change the scale of the fall off. So you see, um, if I'm zooming out, you see that the fall off area is here. The moment I go in, I start hearing the airplane. So as I get closer, you hear more of it, which is like already pretty cool. All right, so now um, maybe they're listening to like a s super cool rock song. This is a, s a song that I got from the Facebook sound collection. Um, you can just quickly Google it and find it. So now you have the music. You can specialize it too. I want it to loop as well. And then um, I just want to move it into the into the uh, airplane. So um, now I can also uh, create the fall off. And the moment I put my head in there, you will start hearing it, right? So now this sound is looping. So now you have this, but, but I'm going to mute all the sounds. And now we want the uh, characters to move, right? Because they're not moving right now. And this is why I set it up with the head, you know, so I want the head to have its own uh, layer and the dog head as well. So now we have um, both heads. And the cool thing about um, uh, about the new timeline features is that you can actually animate groups. So what I'm going to do is like underneath the guy layer, I'm going to create a sequence layer and call it head loop. So this is going to be uh, the loop and I'm going to put the head in there. I stop the timeline, go back to the first frame by hitting alt trigger and left on the left thumbstick. FX node is asking, is it possible to do, draw animation paths? I mean, yes, you can. Not in a sense like Maya, but what you can do, let me show it a little quick. You can create a new new layer and you can draw an animation path, right? And then um, you create like a bird or something. So let me create like a little bird little quick. So you have a, let me create like a green bird. So this is your bird and now you have your animation path. And then what you can do is you turn on animate duplicate transform selection and then you just duplicate it like this alongside the path so it's not like um you're not gonna animate um you're not gonna attach anything to the path but you can draw literally draw an animation path and then when you hit play you know it's it's gonna follow that path and it's much faster to work this way than actually having to like create the path and then attach things to the path because now with the grab tool you can actually go frame by frame so let me go back a little so here you can actually frame by frame at like bank animations or something like this you know and then you can like quickly like adjust it frame by frame as well so it's a much more believable motion so this is how i would do animation paths um 
and what I like is it's intuitive. It's not technical. You don't have to know anything about rotation axes and, you know, uh, Z up and how to constrain it properly and stuff like that. You know, all of that stuff is redundant now. So which is like an animator's dream, right? So, okay, now I put the rotation axis here and then, so maybe he's like banging his head towards the music. Uh, so I'm gonna turn on the music again, right? Okay, so let me see if I can start the music later. Uh, no, I think it's good. Okay, so the cool thing about it now, I, there's this uh, feature here in Quill where you can record motion, right? So you can um, basically turn on the record here, and then you hit play. So play is also the left thumbstick press, and then you can play. And then you can puppeteer. He's like banging his head towards the music. So I have this now. If I rewind and hit play, now he's like dancing to the music, right? So yeah, and then I can basically choose I want it to loop loop at the end. So maybe here. So I can go here and say like here I want it to loop again. So now it's like basically banging his head around, right? So now um, what I'm going to do is like, uh, I'm going to go to his head layer and see, um, I want to basically match the first frame with the last frame. I think this works actually, where you can go to the loop point um, and select the, create a key. Let me see if this worked. Yeah, and then you just bring it back. <laughs> it actually works. Um, so this way, in the loop point will match, right? So, so let's say I want it to loop here. Um, I basically bring this over here and then I hit, oops, not what I wanted. I wanted to move the key. And then I go to the sequence and hit loop. So now the first key and the last uh, key match. And all I need to do is like, I want, um, here, here, he should look around a little bit. So let me add a little bit of motion as well. Yeah, so this is good. So when I hit play, there he is. So he will go out of sync, of course, you know, I can do the, I could puppeteer him the whole song, which is, which would be crazy, you know, uh, but you could to totally do this and it would only take the length of the song. So what I'm going to do now is like I create another layer on top of this for um, the X rotation. I think it's the X rotation. Let me call it X. Um, let me bring this uh, reset pivot. It's actually the Y rotation. So let me call it Y. And then I do the same thing, right? So uh, let me go to the last keyframe. So here I'm gonna already set a last keyframe here. And then I set a first keyframe here uh, at the beginning of the uh, loop. And then what I'm gonna do is like, because I want to protect the last keyframe, what you can do is you can create like an, an in and out point, an out point here. So the animation will stop right here. And then I will transition to the first key. If that makes sense. So you see the bright highlighted area is what it's going to play right now. So now I'm gonna bring down the um, the pivot point down here, and then I hit play and animate the Y rotation. Oops, let me go back, hit record. Now I have to hit play. And then maybe he's looking. 
I can just puppeteer him. And then it stops, right? So now it stopped, so I can go here and um, hit all again. So now it transitions perfectly over from the last frame to this frame, and I get a perfect loop. So now he's looking around, and it adds a lot of life to it, right? So, so pretty cool. Okay, um... Now I have um, the, the guy banging to the head, now I want the dog to look around as well. So let's do that. So I'm gonna bring the pivot of uh, the dog neck here, so you can just... And then I'm gonna basically uh, animate the head movement here. So I'm gonna um, create another layer. Do the same thing, I'm going to put this in here. This is the Y rotation. Um, for the Y rotation, I'm going to reset the pivot and put the pivot here. And then I'm going to go to the head rotation, and this is going to be uh, the X rotation. And then I do the same thing because I want to... Well, actually, the loop point doesn't have to be the same. So what I can do is, like, let's see, I want the animation to be... Let's see how long I want it to be. Maybe I want the animation to be, let's see where the guy loops. So the guy's head loops at 14 seconds. Maybe the dog loops at like 10 seconds or something, right? So, um, so for the dog loop, I need like 10 seconds. So this needs to be in a sequence. So I'm gonna put a sequence layer on top and put the, so this is gonna be the head loop. loop and then um, let's see I want to basically loop the animation here at 10 seconds so I'm gonna hit loop on the sequence layer and then I also set keyframes for both head and um, and uh, the Y rotation so I have keyframes here and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna define the workplace area so it stops where I want it to stop and I start recording the Y rotation first, uh, the X rotation, sorry about that. So he's looking around and maybe he's not banging his head, he's just looking around like this. And just subtle movements, so this is good enough. And then I do the same thing for uh, the Y rotation. And this is like a quick and dirty way to do animation, right? So now I can just, maybe he's like looking around. Hmm. And then it comes to a stop at 10 seconds. Um, I hit all and hit play and then you will see he's already animated right so now like it has already like a lot of like life this is pretty cool and now somebody asked uh if there's uh victor john can you have camera animation track as well no cameras let me let me mute the sound. Cameras is actually not uh, in the uh, scene hierarchy. We have this thing called, there's this thing called spawn area. So uh, if you, if I show you the spawn area, where is it? So there, there it is. So this is basically where you can, you see like the desktop icon here. Um, basically this is where your rift forward is. And if you want to like go to this angle, look at the guys you can just move to that spawn area and this spawn area is also animatable so which is which i'm gonna show next but this is like um you can animate cameras this way so this is not a camera but it acts kind of like a camera so um that's like one thing you can do but if you want to use the capture tool here um you would have to basically hold it and capture uh uh, uncompressed AVI. So you're limited to maybe like 10 seconds or 15 seconds if you go full resolution because um, it's uncompressed so the files get corrupt otherwise so be careful that that doesn't happen. All right so now I have um, the, the airplane. Now what if I... Um, so the song is in there. So let me find a good point 
to uh, loop this. I actually don't want to loop the song. So okay, let me let me see what what I can do here. So uh, one thing, uh, if I want this to be like um, a linear thing, and I want to animate the plane now between the clouds, it's like flying and avoiding clouds and stuff like that. You can do that too. By basically, you just um, hit uh, the transform button here, and then you can record, right? And hit play, and then puppeteer this whole thing. So let let me try this a little quick, and then we can actually put the cam attach the camera into the plane and fly with them, which is kind of crazy. So I'm gonna um, hit play here and start puppeteering it right away. So it's flying. So I'm like in real time, avoiding the clouds. Maybe I go under a little bit and up again. And then flying, 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 <sighs> flying. And this reminds me of like a, being a kid again, you know? So I can do something like this. So I'm not going to do it for much longer, but um, it goes under the clouds, <sighs> up and down, banking, 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 and then stop. Okay, so now this is was already a pretty long animation, and then you can see like I can, you can see like the super smooth animation here, you know. But this this pilot is pretty violent, right? So <laughs> he's doing some crazy stuff. But what I can show you now is like if you now put that spawn area in there. So let's become another co-pilot here. Maybe we sit next to behind them, right? So um, what I can do is like I bring the spawn area here. Where is it? Oops. Hold on. Oh, there it is. I had it hidden. And I put our head. So this is this is our head here. So I'm gonna put our head right here and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool angle. It feels like life scale. And um, then I put this spawn area into the plane. So now, um, oops. So this I call POV. POV. And I'm going to put this into the plane layer, right? Now when I play it back, you won't see it moving with it. So it will just, um, the plane will just fly away. You see, like, it's doing some crazy stuff there. Um, what you're going to do, uh, what I should have done is, like, going to the first frame and then move the POV. So let me, um, now it's, like, gone. Oh, no, it's, it's still in the right place. All right. Of course it's in the right place because it was parented. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit this button, Preview Viewpoint, during playback. If I do this, now I'm with them in the plane and I'm gonna vomit anytime soon because this is like pretty violent. This is not how a pilot would fly. You know, I would probably not survive this flight, but um, you can see uh, if I hide this, um, hide this spawn area preview, it's pretty cool. You can, you can experience this from first person view, which is like pretty nice and they're like, enjoying the music and let me turn on the music as well and the sound and then i could also of course put the cloud sounds in there where how they are whizzing by and stuff like that yeah flying through the clouds Woo. okay i'm starting to get the cold sweat so i better jump out of this plane here and uh, look at it from the outside. But you see the positional audio is working. You know, when you get closer, you hear the sound better. If you go further away, you don't hear it as much. And then you can just, now you can pick up the camera, for example, and shoot your movie, right? So this looks pretty cool. It looks like straight out of a cartoon. You can just capture it, boom. And now you have a video clip, right? And then you get like all those cool angles. Which is pretty cool. So, um,
yeah, I think uh, this is it. Uh, basically, you can easily puppeteer a, an animation like this. Um, I think I need to loop this in order to, let me loop this here. Um, so I'm gonna uh, put the whole plane in a new sequence. Um, now the the sound will cut off at some point, like um, it won't loop properly, but um, I will go to the last frame of the airplane here and let it, let it loop, let the sequence loop here. So it will jump back to its own original position and the sound will start from scratch as well. But um, I wanted to make sure that you guys see the final result while um, I'm basically talking and watching this piece, right? So, um, let's see, so this is, uh, this is the live stream. Uh, it's pretty cool what you can do with the new timeline features. Uh, let me see if there's like any uh, other questions. I think that's it, but um, yeah, just wanted to share with you guys uh, how quickly you can do like cool things here in Quill. Um, you see like it took, how long was it? It's like an hour and 20 minutes and you already have like a complex animation. It's all nested animation as well where the, the characters are moving, the airplane is moving organically, avoiding those clouds uh, with positional audio and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty remarkable what you can do. So um, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, let me turn off the audio <laughs> because um, maybe maybe the audio is actually pretty good to have, but uh, let me turn it off for now. I hope you enjoyed uh, the live stream and um, got some useful information out of it. And uh, see you next time. Bye, guys.